when a couple cannot conceive a child, they'll go to a reproductive center, and sometimes they are facing a specific condition, the presence of anti-sperm antibodies. What does it mean? If you're interested, watch this video. And I'm Dr. Olena Berezovska. I'm welcoming you on my YouTube channel. A sperm is a foreign liquid for a female, for women, and no wonder that some women can produce antibodies. Is it safe when the couple planning pre pregnancy? Also, sometimes anti-sperm antibodies are found in sperm, especially when a couple um, uh, goes to the doctor and they check the sperm or sperm count. Probably you already heard about MAR test. Let's talk about that. But first, we are going to talk about women. Because uh, sperm has a lot of different types of proteins and actually it's a very complex liquid by structure and we also can call it biological tissue as well. No wonder that uh, women's body can produce different types of antibodies on different types of ingredients of the sperm, especially proteins. That's why all women who have regular uh, sex without protection, it means without condoms, can have special level anti-sperm antibodies in their blood, which is really is a normal of life. But some women can react quite aggressively on sperm. And these women can have even a higher level of anti-sperm antibodies, and it could be different antibodies. These antibodies could be the reaction on some specific types of proteins on the surface of spermatozoa or other ingredients of sperms. But we are not talking about allergic reaction on sperm. Allergic reaction on sperm is quite rare condition when we have all chains of allergic reaction itself. And we have not just a high, very high level of antibodies, but also we have a severe reaction of female body. In medical literature, we have only a few cases uh, of allergic reaction on sperm. Anti-sperm antibodies can be produced in any part of female's body, but usually it's locally in cervical channel, usually in mucus or in vagina. But also we can find uh, some level of antibodies in, in the blood. And in different periods of life, the different level of this antibody. Approximately 10% of women have antibodies for sperm. And we usually talk about a little bit higher level than in general population. But we still don't know what kind of role these antibodies play in a woman's body. But let's talk about men. Because anti-sperm antibodies in men, male's body, it's a little bit different because they are produced as a reaction on own sperm. What do these antibodies mean in a relation with conception with pregnancy. Usually we're looking for three classes of antibodies, G, M, and A. We do not know the importance of IgM and IgA. This size is big and we hardly know if they can damage sperm or not. Antibodies IgG are small in size and may attack spermatozoa. There was a suggestion when uh, a man is suffering of some autoimmune uh, diseases. The production of anti-sperm antibodies could his own autoimmune reaction on testes and spermatozoa. But it's interesting that the nature can protect testes and spermatozoa very well. But we don't have a proof that these antibodies can destroy spermatozoa or other parts of sperm. We can find a high level of antibodies in men who had some infection or some trauma or actually surgery, mostly in scrotum area in the, on the testes. But in some way, inflammation and traumatization can increase antibodies in other parts of um, human body. And around 10% of men would have anti-sperm antibodies. There are different types of uh, anti-sperm antibodies. Some of them are reaction on specific proteins that are covering spermatozoa. 
The membrane of spermatozoa consists of many different types of protein and no wonder that uh, this protein can be a target anti-sperm antibodies. But semen itself has a lot of different types of other proteins and they could also be a target for antibodies. It means that every man could have absolutely different anti-sperm antibodies. And we know that antibodies after surgery uh, are different from antibodies after inflammation, for example. That's why we do know which antibodies are good and which are bad. And what is the normal level for different types and classes of antibodies. And for the last 30 years, the normal uh, ranges for spermogram has been changed completely. In 1999, for example, it was normal to have morphology of 80-90% of healthy spermatozoa, but today 4% of morphologically normal spermatozoa could be a norma. And level of other ingredients of sperm change completely and we don't call now many conditions as abnormal. Before we were talking about liberal norm or liberal ranges, now we are talking about specific ranges. World Health Organization created its own criteria of normal spermogram and it's quite different from those that required by some professional organizations, especially specializing in uh, male infertility. That's why we have some dispute between andrologists, reproductologists, and many other doctors who involved are involved in uh, infertility, especially male infertility. But it's interesting when we are talking about anti-sperm antibodies, you can find them in a perfect uh, samples of sperm or in sperm that has some pathological changes. At the beginning, there was suggestion that if you have a lot of pathological, morphologically spermatozoa, then you should have a very high level of antibody. But some studies show that morphology and antibody production are not related and not associated. But sperm that has some other abnormal changes also may have a high level of anti-sperm antibodies. The association was found between concentration of spermatozoa. Antibodies can be produced on different parts of spermatozoa. For example, there is acrosome part, it's on the head of spermatozoa. Acrosome reaction is very important uh, for spermatozoa to get inside of uh, egg. In general, the structure of spermatozoa is quite complicated and complex, and also it has a lot of different types of proteins. That's why we also have different types of anti-sperm antibodies. So at the present, we know about different types of antibodies, but we hardly know their role uh, for sperm, for sperm fertility. But why some doctors recommend to to do a MAR test. What is MAR test? It's actually the measurement of anti-sperm antibodies in male sperm. But when it comes to the normal ranges of these antibodies, there are also a lot of changes. For example, 10 years ago or less, uh, normal was like 10% of antibodies when we say that this is like negative test. Now the cutoff is 50%, so it's quite a lot, it's a huge difference. So less than 50%, it's a normal range, and more than 50%, it's already like abnormal test. Some doctors are not agree with such norms. Some uh, say are saying that martyrs shouldn't be done because it has little practical value. So what kind of conclusion we can make? First of all, that we don't have enough information that Martes has a really practical value as itself. So it should be done in combination, probably in combination with some other tests, also learning the history of uh, infertility. The presence of anti-sperm antibodies, it's not a diagnosis. So we have to look for diagnosis 
and sometimes the diagnosis not in male infertility but related to female infertility. But at the same time, if we see uh, not just one but many abnormalities in the sperm and we have these antibodies, well, we might suggest that the person is suffering of infertility. The problem is we hardly can find any um, causes uh, for specific uh, conditions of male infertility because we still don't have a proper guidelines on male infertility, what kind of test we have to do, how we have to interpret the results of this test, how we can treat this person, etc. We cannot treat antibodies. There is no medication to treat antibodies. We can treat some conditions, but again, the level of, level of anti-sperm antibodies can be low or can be high, and sometimes with time it changes as well. If we have some uh, inflammation, especially acute inflammation, uh, of course we can prescribe some medication, antibiotics, and this level of antibodies can be low uh, in a couple weeks. But if the damage is big, and actually the level of antibodies could be high a little bit longer. But also we know that a high temperature smoking can damage the sperm. So we usually advise a healthy lifestyle, and not just for a man, but for a, for a couple, for, for a woman too. And also exercise, because exercise improve blood circulation in testes and improve the quality of sperm. So once again, if... Uh, the test shows that there are anti-sperm antibodies. It doesn't mean that it's a problem of infertility. If you like this video, press like. And, and don't forget to subscribe to my video channel to watch some other videos.